Hey, Isaac here. It's Tuesday, July 20th. Welcome to the Living the Dream Show with Kevin White. This is the podcast where we live the dream of people of every nation, tribe and tongue, worship Jesus together on earth today as it already is in heaven. On Friday, August 6th, Kevin will be sharing part two of a powerful message from God's Word entitled God Guides, God Provides. I hope you'll join us for this international live broadcast from the USA via Zoom, YouTube or Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday, August 6th. Details at kevinwhite.us. kevinwhite.us. We'll see you there. Okay, now here's Kevin with today's show. Thank you so much, Isaac. Everyone, welcome to the Living the Dream show. I'm Pastor Kevin, and I'm excited to have you in the audience today. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm actually waving at you right now. I welcome everyone in the USA, India, Thailand, Singapore, Afghanistan, Australia, Uganda, Canada, Mexico, everyone in between. Thank you so much for being in the audience today. High fives to everyone that is subscribing, reviewing, and sharing the Living the Dream show. I join Isaac in welcoming each of you to Living the Dream. So on today's episode, I'm going to share excerpts of a video from Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback Church in San Diego, California. He's always been a hero and mentor to me uh, from a distance. Uh, I've actually been blessed to meet him and to worship there at Saddleback before. And I am just very impressed with God's hand upon Pastor Rick. And he is sharing a message to a coalition of ministries around the world, a global audience about finishing the task of the Great Commission. And I want you to dive into today's episode as he shares this important message with us. I'm going to be sharing part one today. You'll want to be back next week for part two, but let's listen to Pastor Rick. Pastor Rick, take it away. Hello, friends. You know, as I am sharing this update with our FTT, that's finishing the task ministry partners, about 1,600 different agencies. I also wanted to speak directly to you. Those of you who are paving the way with your giving, your financial partners in this movement, uh, leading the way with your generosity. And I, I just want you to know, I'm really excited to talk with you because God taught me the ministry of generosity early on in life. And Kay and I personally uh, have enjoyed the joy of giving to finishing the task and the Great Commission literally for years. In fact, the other day, I, I found out that we'd given, Kay and I personally had given over $12 million to the Great Commission in our lifetime. Now, God made that possible simply because we were willing to open up our hands and you can't outgive God. Now, in this coming season, we're gonna coalesce and catalyze churches and organizations and ordinary believers all across the globe to reach farther and faster in the work of the Great Commission, faster than ever before. And we've got a goal, AD 2033. Think of this, FTT AD 2033, FTT AD 2033. AD 2033 will mark the 2000th anniversary of the Great Commission. If 2021 is uh, really, uh, that's the correct date, we're, we're in 2021, then Jesus gave us the instructions to make disciples of all nations in AD 33. So that means the 20th an or the 2000th anniversary is just 12 years away. It's a wonderful signpost for finishing the Great Commission in our generation to make disciples of all nations. And I believe we're gonna be able to see this goal realized for the next 12 years, in the next 12 years. Now, today's update is gonna introduce uh, the partner agencies to three world-class leaders that I have recruited who've stepped up to lead each of the three B goals, a Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ. A Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ. You're gonna hear those over and over. A Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ within reach of everyone, everywhere, 
around the world. And you know what? We're also cultivating deeper relational connections with leaders of networks, leaders of movements, partners in the field to speed up the progress with unprecedented cooperation. I'm so excited I can hardly sleep at night because the technology has made it possible for us to network everybody in ways we couldn't even do it five years ago. Now, I've always said that the greatest investment you can make with your time and your talent and your treasure is to invest it in a ministry that's gonna outlast it, that will last for eternity. You know, I can spend my time and my money and my effort on a lot of things that aren't gonna last five years, much yet less for eternity. But there is no greater cause than the kingdom of God. It's why God created the entire universe. God wanted a family. And the only reason Jesus Christ does not come back yet is he wants a big family. He is creating people that he wants in his forever family in eternity. Now, I know you get that because you have faithfully shown your commitment to the kingdom by your unselfish giving. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. I, I also want to say that when you are supporting finishing the task, you're supporting something that is literally uniting the body of Christ around the world. We've got Pentecostals and Evangelicals and Calvinists and Catholics and, 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 and Baptists and Methodists and every kind of other denomination you can imagine. I've never seen a coalition this big. And when you serve and when you share and when you give in helping us finish the task, you're literally helping the body of Christ globally in an entirely new and exciting way. And you're making something possible that has never been possible up to this point. So thanks everybody. Now, I want us to join our FTT partner agencies for this update, watch this. Hi everybody, I'm Rick Warren, the founding pastor of Saddleback Church, author of The Purpose Driven Life. And you may not know, but for the past couple of years, I've been the director of the Finishing the Task Coalition of about 1600 mission agencies and boards and ministries and churches and denominations all committed to the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. What I wanna share with you uh, today is what we're calling FTT 2.0 or Finishing the Task 2.0. And more about that in just a moment. First, I want to just share some personal thoughts uh, with you as a leader uh, of a Great Commission agency. I've been waiting for some time to say five or six specific things to you. I want to say this. First, I thank God for you. I really do. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. Thank you for keeping the main thing the main thing. You know, the Bible tells us that there are only two things that are going to last forever. One of them is the word of God, and the other is the people uh, that God created. They're gonna spend eternity one of two places. So there really is nothing more important to do with our lives than what you're doing. Connecting people who have an eternal soul with the eternal word of God so that they can meet the everlasting God in Jesus Christ. And I just wanna say thank you for doing what matters most, being a great commission agency. Second. I want you to know I've prayed for you. You don't know that, but I have. I've been praying for you. Because the first thing that I did after accepting the position of leading the Finishing the Task Coalition of nearly 1,600 different Great Commission agencies and boards and denominations and ministries is to begin praying for everybody who has partnered with us in the past in this Great Commission endeavor. So you need to know I've been praying for you. Third. I want to affirm what you already know, but it's nice to hear other people say it. Your ministry matters to the kingdom of God. We need you. We need what you are doing for the Great Commission and for the global glory of God. Nothing matters more. And I know it's easy to get discouraged, and particularly this last year with the COVID-19 pandemic all around that changed all of our plans. I just want you to know that in serving this great coalition and collaboration of Great Commission Ministries, I'm going to be a champion for your ministry and for what God has called you to do. And you can count on me, Rick Warren, to be a cheerleader 
for you. We're all in this together. And I've got a pretty big mouth and I can be a pretty big cheerleader for you. So just know that I'm on your side. Hey, it's Isaac. Kevin will be right back. Kevin White is an international speaker and best-selling author who loves helping people everywhere to prosper in God's presence. A serial entrepreneur, Kevin has helped start hundreds of businesses, nonprofits, and churches. As founder, executive director of Global Hope India, Kevin has traveled over 1 million miles to 27 different countries, speaking to thousands of audiences throughout India and the world. Visit kevinwhite.us for Kevin's books, one-minute motivation series, and podcasts. Visit kevinwhite.us today. For over 20 years, Global Hope India has been empowering the church in India as they make Christ known. Visit globalhopeindia.org and learn how you can pray, give and go. Over 1,000 people have served on one of GHI's short-term mission trips to India. Now you can join a virtual mission team to India. Visit globalhopeindia.org today because everyone should have access to hear about Jesus. Okay, now back to the show. Number four, I'd like to be able to pray more intelligently for you. Many years ago, God called me to pray for other ministries consistently. So if you'll just send me some of your specific prayer requests, you can count on this. You can know that I will definitely join you in prayer. I'll join you in praying that God answers the specific requests that you and your team are praying for in your organization. We're in this together, as I said, and the first line of battle in the Great Commission is prayer, as you know. In fact, that's why it was the first group that I met with this year was the leaders of all the major prayer ministries around the globe. I call them the prayer generals. And I asked them to pray for you and to pray with you uh, as I'm doing. So please, I want you to send me your specific requests and I will take them seriously. Fifth, I want you to know that I would love to have a closer relationship with you and your organization. You know, God has blessed me. I'm in my 41st year at Saddleback Church. I'm in my 51st year of ministry and uh, I love other ministries. And I'm a voracious reader, and I love learning about what God is doing through different organizations. So please, put me on your mailing list, okay? And send me updates about what God is doing in your ministry, how he's working through the year. I really want to support you uh, in your efforts to fulfill your part of the Great Commission that you've been called to. Finally, uh, I'd like to ask you to let me know the answers to three or four questions that are burning in my heart. Here are the questions. What tools do you need to help you finish the task that God has called you to? What tools do you need? You say, I don't have these in our, in our pantry, in our arsenal. I don't have these. Uh, we need these tools. I'd like to know that because I might be able to find them from somebody else and we could cross-pollinate. Number two, what kind of people and what kind of skills are you looking for to accomplish what God's called you to do? Okay, what, what tools, what skills and people? Number three, what resources and funding do you need to do what God's called you to do? Do you know, I've had the privilege at Saddleback Church to raise in my years as pastor over $1 billion for kingdom causes. I do know how to raise funds. I need to know what resources, what funding you need in your areas that God has called you to do. We're in this together. You're gonna to hear me keep saying that. Finally, would you send me the contact information that you want me to use to stay in touch with you personally? As an agency or ministry leader, uh, I'd like to just be able to stay in touch with you and I'll give you my personal uh, connection if you'll just write to me, I would really appreciate it. Now, my email is pastorrick at saddleback.com. Pastor Rick, one word, uh, two R's, Pastor Rick at saddleback.com. And if you want to mail me some of your materials, your brochures or books or curriculum or anything so that I can familiarize myself as uh, leading 
the Finishing the Task Coalition. I want to know what you're doing. You can mail them to Rick Warren, one Saddleback Parkway, just the number one Saddleback Parkway, Lake Forest, California, 92630. And those will get to me, okay? So thank you so much. Now, here's what I wanted to talk to you about. One of my life verses, which I uh, have carried in my heart for now 40, 50 years, is Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. One of the questions that I have been obsessed with over the last couple of years as I took on this new assignment to lead and convene uh, the Finishing the Task Coalition is this. Why hasn't the Great Commission already been accomplished? With all of the great Christian leaders of the past generations, why is it still undone? Now, I don't know all the answers to that question, but I do think I know a few of the reasons. As I've traveled around the world and I've actually had the privilege of training about a half a million face-to-face -face, uh, church leaders and pastors all around the world. Now, I don't want to share with you the full vision of what we're calling FTT 2.0, uh, cause that would take this entire video. But I do want to give you some bullet points of, of things that I believe we must do. But let me just start with an illustration. During World War II, when uh, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor and Germany attacked most of Europe and then North Africa, uh, America, our country that I live in, was completely unprepared to defend itself, much less save the lives of others. But in one of the greatest and fastest mobilizations in history, America turned things around very quickly and took the battle all the way back to the two countries that started it, Germany and, and Japan. Now, that was not accomplished by just sending out one boat across the Pacific. We sent several fleets of many different types of ships to finish the task, both across the Atlantic to, uh, to Europe and across the Pacific to, to Asia. And there were battleships and there were submarines and there were PT boats and there were destroyers and aircraft carriers, all different kinds of ships, big ones, little ones, medium sized. And I think there's a parallel to the task that we're called to finish, completing the Great Commission in our lifetime. You know, the United States Navy had a clear target and they pushed forward from island to island, uh, liberating one at a time uh, until uh, the enemy surrendered. Now, here's what I think it's going to take for us to complete the Great Commission in our generation. All right. Let me just give you quickly some bullet points. Number one, we have to mobilize all the allies and let them fly their own flags. Now, let me explain that. America did not win World War II. The Allies won World War II. And the Australians fought in the Allied services under the Australian flag. And the Canadians fought under the Canadian flag. And the French fought under the French flag. And the resistance in different countries fought under their own flag. And Americans fought under their flag. It wasn't one country. It was an allied group, a coalition of the willing who were committed and flying their own flag. I believe to win the Great Commission, you need to fly under your own flag. I don't think we need to. I, sometimes I go to these conferences and say, lay aside your logo and lay aside your ego and let's just all be one. I don't agree with that at all. God has called you to do what he's called you to do and we can be allies and we can be partners while you still fly your own flag, the ministry that God has raised up that you're a part of. And so when we talk about finishing the task coalition, we're not talking about um, smoothing over our differences, our uniqueness. God made us unique. God gave us our differences, but we do have the same Bible, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. We have one Holy Spirit. We have one word of God. We have one heaven we're all going to. That's what matters. But we're gonna mobilize all the allies and let them fly their own flags together. All right, number two, we need a simple and clear target. 
And you may have already heard this, but we've been talking now for a couple of years, the finishing the task coalition of what we call the three B's, a Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ. All right. We want a Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ in every unreached, unengaged people group and a Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ in every unengaged, unreached place. All right. These are the three B's. It's pretty simple that our goal is to get a Bible in everybody's heart language. And that includes deaf uh, Bibles who, for that are visual for those who, who uh, do not hear. And it all includes uh, audio Bibles for blind who do not see. And by the way, I want to apologize. We were hoping to have this message from me uh, with sign language going with it, but I'm taping it so late because I had one of my closest staff members, uh, John Baker, who founded Celebrate Recovery, die this week. And so we weren't able to get that done. But a Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ. Everybody can say that. We want it. We want it. There are still places in the world have no word of God in their heart language, have no known believer uh, in their people group, and have no church planted among their uh, their people. And so that's it. Our simple, clear target is the three B's: a Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ in every people group and in every unreached place, all right? The third thing we need, we need a deadline. You know, a dream without a deadline is just a dream, okay? It's just a dream. But a goal with a target and a deadline creates a sense of urgency. Now, some of you are old enough to remember AD 2000, that around the year 2000, there were over, oh, I think, 1,500, couple thousand different Christian agencies who all set some kind of a goal related to AD 2000. There wasn't any biblical significance to the year 2000. It was just a good year. And people said, we're gonna do this by the year 2000. It was a great time. Here's the problem. After that year came and went, I haven't heard any deadline goal in the last 21 years since AD 2000. But let me just say this, there's one coming up that should motivate us all. And it's this, if the Christian calendar is accurate, if this really is 2021, as we're you know, calling this year, if this is really 2021, it means that Jesus gave the Great Commission in AD 33, okay? At the end of his ministry, before he ascended back to heaven, in AD 33, Jesus gave the Great Commission. That means 2033, which is just 12 years away, is the 2000th anniversary of the Great Commission. 2033 will be the 2000th anniversary of Jesus giving us the Great Commission. I can't think of a better target. Uh, for us to just say, this is going to be our generation's target to complete the work and finish the task that Jesus gave us to do. There is no reason why it can't be done. Just none whatsoever. We have the technology, we have the resources, we have the people. It can be done. As I said, in World War II, they didn't do it on their own. They did it as allies. And this is the vision of unity that we want in finishing the task, that AD 2033 is our goal. Now, there's no eschatological significance to AD 2033. In fact, that year, if we were able to complete the Great Commission, there will be new babies born in that year and on until Jesus decides to come back. Uh, but it just gives us a date. So we wanna have a Bible, a believer, and a body of Christ in every unreached people group, in every unreached place by AD 2033, which is the 2000th anniversary of the Great Commission. Thank you for listening to the Living the Dream Show with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us 
or subscribe for free through your favorite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program is copyright Kevin White International, all rights reserved. Each week we bring you a message of living the dream as people of every nation, tribe and tongue worship Jesus together on earth today as it already is in heaven. Remembering the gift of God's presence through Jesus Christ is accessible to everyone. Join us again next week for Living the Dream with Kevin White. Living the Dream with Kevin White.